today on Campai Planet, we're putting Nikas Taketsura Pure Malt, old versus new, head to head. Welcome to Campai Planet, I'm Mac, and today we're coming to you from Aloha Whiskey in Tokyo, one of the best whiskey bars in the world for our first ever whiskey tasting, where we're gonna be putting Nikas Taketsura Pure Malt, new version and previous iteration, head to head. This whiskey is one of Nikka's signature products and it's named in honor of Masataka Taketsuru, the founder of Nikka and the father of Japanese whiskey. Taketsuru's story is absolutely fascinating. He was born in 1894 into a sake brewing family. In 1918, driven by an ambition to make genuine whiskey, he traveled alone to Scotland. He enrolled at Glasgow University, took chemistry, and then apprenticed at three Scotch distilleries. His legendary notebooks filled with everything he learned became Japan whiskey's holy texts. In 1920, he returned to Japan with his Scottish wife, Rita. On returning, they discovered that Setsu Shuzo, the company that had sponsored his trip, had abandoned their plans to make genuine whiskey due to recessions in the aftermath of World War I. As luck would have it, another company, Kotobukiya, was in search of somebody who could make whiskey, literally being the only Japanese person who knew how to make genuine whiskey. He was hired and in 1923 oversaw the construction of the Yamazaki distillery. That's right, Kotobukiya later became Suntory. After his 10-year contract ended, Taketsuru decided to branch out on his own. In 1934, he started work on his own distillery in Yoichi, in Hokkaido, a place he had always thought was the ideal site to make whiskey in Japan. And in 1940, their first product, Nika Whiskey, was released. And this word was gonna become the name of the company itself. Like many Nika whiskies, Taketsuru is a blend. In fact, it's a homage to the blending skills of Taketsuru himself, but, unlike many blends, that it doesn't contain any grain whiskey. In fact, it's a blend from Yoichi Distillery and from Nika's second distillery, Miyagi Kyo in Sendai. The Taketsuru range was launched in 2000. It began with a 12 year and it was soon joined by a 17, a 21 and a 25 year. In fact, there was even a 35 year that was launched in 2008 and limited to a thousand bottles. Now fans of Japanese whiskey know that Japan's distillers unfortunately scaled back production around the start of this century, reacting to a slump in domestic demand that began in 1984. Unfortunately, this left them shorthanded when demand started to pick back up in 2008, and the fact I have two Taketsurus in front of me is a result of this pinch. The first casualty was the 12 year, part of a cull of lower age statement whiskies and smaller bottle sizes by Nikka in 2014 and 2015. Now, very ironically, this was in part caused by a morning drama, what we call an asadora in Japan, called Masan, which was a fictionalized account of the founding of Nikka whiskey. It broadcast every morning in Japan for about six months from September 2014. Now, anticipating the discontinuation of the 12 year, Nika released this no age statement Taketsuru whiskey in September 2013. Now, fast forward to early 2020 and things get worse. Nika announced the discontinuation of the 17, 21 year, and 25 year Taketsuru whiskies and the reformulation of this into this. So, today we're going to take a look at how this new iteration of Taketsuru compares to its previous one. Okay, so the former Taketsuru is primarily single malt from Miyagi Kyo, that second distillery, and some malt from Yoichi. And it's aged in primarily uh, ex bourbon, uh, ex sherry, uh, American oak casks, uh, refill, remade, and recharred. It's bottled at 43%. It's non chill filtered, but has added coloring. Okay, let's check it out. So color wise, a light amber color. Remember it does have that added coloring. Yeah, nice uh, light golden color. Okay, let's check it out on the nose. Wow, that's wonderful. Kind of rich. Yeah, very rich, but with a hint of tart. Definitely getting the sherry from the sherry casks. 
uh, kind of manifests itself as a rich pudding. There's a light smokiness there. I'm getting a hint of coffee, but also some vanilla, sandalwood. I'd say some chamomile as well. And a bit of spice kicking in at the end. Some uh, nutmeg, maybe even some star anise. Okay, let's actually taste the thing. Hmm. That is very nice. Um, a lot of body, quite light at first though, so getting out some um, chocolate, a bit of vanilla, and uh, some pastry as well, I would say. But then that transitions, it's, uh, it's quite prickly. At the back, a bit of that spice, um, maybe a bit of licorice as well. Getting a bit of that coffee I detected on the nose and also a bit of white pepper. You know, it's actually quite crisp and sharp for a Nikka blend. I think you struggle to find that peat, which would be indicative of the Yoichi distillery's influence. Uh, it is there if you look for it. Um, but uh, overwhelmed by some of those other flavors that I talked about. As for the finish, I'd say short to medium. So some of that uh, oakiness and woodiness is still there. Um, kind of moving, I don't know, to uh, a bitter uh, element, almost medicinal, um, like a camphor. Uh, so on the whole, not bad. Little bit disappointed actually by the finish, given how great it was on the palate. So what's the verdict? absolutely delicious. Uh, must own, in my opinion, if you can find it. This is real Japanese whiskey, uh, rich and complex. Fantastic. Whilst it's well suited, I think, to sipping neat, uh, I think this would be perfect in an old-fashioned if you're into cocktails and if you want to pair it with something, I think it would work very well with some aged cheese. If this is your first time here, welcome to Kampai Planet. We want you in our community of Japanese drinks lovers. So please like and subscribe and click that bell icon for all notifications for future videos from us. Okay, out with the old and onto the etc. Okay, so this new Taketsuru is also bottled at 43% and it's also non-chill filtered and also has added coloring. In order to make effective use of what little aged whiskey stocks they have, Nick have actually limited this to 264,000 bottles per year. It's a new label design, but we've still got the kanji for Taketsuru, and you've got the signature of the man, and also the crest of Nika whiskey. And this new color scheme fits in better with Nika's range of single malt, no age statements. So you'll be pleased to know that this new Taketsuru meets the new Japanese whiskey standards uh, to be called real Japanese whiskey, which were announced in February 2021. And in fact, we have a video that you should check out if you want to learn more about these. I've heard that this new recipe contains a greater component from the Yoichi distillery. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out uh, as we taste the whiskey. Okay, let's check out the color. I would say old gold. Let's compare it to the old one, I think a little bit lighter than the previous iteration, which makes me wonder if there's been less sherry cask influence uh, in this versus the older version. Okay, let's check it out on the nose. Hmm, I'm getting a lot more citrus here. And definitely a lot peatier as well. Hmm. Interesting, a lot lighter, uh, a lot fresher uh, than the previous one. Like I said, a bit of citrus there. I'm getting a bit of pear, maybe a bit of uh, grapefruit as well. And it almost smells like a higher ABV whiskey, even though these are both 43%. So let's check it out on the palate. Hmm. Ooh, a lot smokier and a lot peatier. Definitely that Yoichi influence kicking in. Um, I would say starts off very citrusy, but then 
as it develops, you get a bit of chocolate, maybe a bit of dark chocolate there uh, at the back. It has quite a creamy mouthfeel um, and it definitely tastes younger than the older Taketsuru and that is completely in line with what we might expect from uh, the fact that these guys have run out <laughs> of a lot of older dated whiskey. On the finish, I'd say a longer finish than the older Taketsuru. Uh, hotter, uh, spicier, a bit of peat in there and uh, some of that chocolate. So head to head, well both of these have a, a nice balance of softness and complexity but I'd have to say I prefer the older version. The newer one is younger and I think less rich. That may well be due to less ex-sherry casks being used in vatting. Now, if you prefer your whiskies fresher and smokier, then I think you actually will prefer this newer version. So, should you buy it? Well, in Japan, the RRP of this whiskey is 4,000 yen plus tax, which is about 27 pounds or 31 euros or 37 US dollars. And if you come here and can find it for that price and good luck with that, then I think it's a must own. Now in the UK, the Nika store on Amazon lists this at 65 pounds, which is two and a half times the price that you find it in Japan. And given the incredible aged scotches that you can buy for that price, I can't in good conscience recommend it. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and please like and subscribe for more. And until next time, kanpai.